Hi everybody, it's mentor jeweler Joel McFadden and I just returned from the Tucson Gem Show which was a lot of fun. Um, very exciting to see some of the really cool stuff and one of my friends won AGTA Spectrum, David Waite. Shout out to you, that was a beautiful pair of cufflinks. But I've got a project that I have to do and I need some stock, some square stock and so i don't have any so what we're going to do is we're going to make some from some scrap metal that we have here and traditionally what we would do is we would use a two-part ingot and we would pour uh, a two-part ingot mold and we would you know pour ourselves a little do a bypass ingot and you use this and you pour it and make yourself an ingot but I know a lot of people don't have these. So I'm gonna show you two alternatives to using an ingot mold. The first one is you can take a block of charcoal and you can carve a groove. And I've already done this once or twice. Just basically carve a nice little groove in here. And we're gonna pour sort of a rough, blow the dust out, rough crude ingot into this and I'm going to show you how to do that but first I want to say when you're pouring an ingot like this you need to make sure that the metal when it's hot and, and molten can't roll into your lap so either have a lap pan like we have here and we're going to get the plastic stuff out of the way and an apron just to be safe and of course protection for your eyes so we'll show you how this works the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take some of the scrap and just sort of drop it in this little groove and this is all silver and we'll take that and then we'll get our torch going and uh, we don't want a very hissy flame we want a sort of a medium flame but you need a pretty big one so the best thing to do is pull the oxygen on until we get hissy And you can see everything's melting fairly quickly. You want this stuff to melt fairly fast because you don't want it to just keep oxidizing. And you can see it's just sort of sitting there. And there goes that, and there goes that. Now we may have to run it together. So now the trick is to take a second piece of charcoal and while it's really nice and hot, gently place it on top and hold it down tight. Wait a few seconds and pull it up. And what we have is a fairly decent, quick little piece of metal. Now we just want to pull it out of here and let it cool off on its own. We're going to let that red leave it, the red glow. And we're going to use our locking tweezers. And I like the locking tweezers with the uh, heat protection here. So now that it's gray, we're just going to quench it. And there you go. This is the beginnings of an ingot. Now, it's not perfect, but all things considered, it's not bad. So the, the next step in this situation is we get this Mizzy. This is a heatless Mizzy wheel. So we want to take the little bit of flashing that we get right here. We want to grind that right off of there because it's just going to be problematic. We're just going to grind that down. Just that little bit of flashing right there and right there. So at this point we have two options. If we have a rolling mill, I can start rolling this right to the mill. And we'll just run it down until we get the wire that we need. If we don't have a rolling mill, then what we can do is we can take our locking tweezers grab one end and this is not easy but it will work and we can just start hammering it down and by no way this is a perfect method but it will work so if we hammer this for a little bit we'll start Pulling out a square piece. And 
then we'll flip it over. And basically, you're going to spend about 20, 15, 20, 30 minutes doing this. But it will work. And just turn it a quarter each time. And as you can see, we're starting to get something that we could actually start to work with. And I'm going to show you an even simpler system, though. We'll take this. I've got a little bit another piece. And this is something I've done time and time again when I need a piece of sizing stock or just a little piece. And I'm in a real hurry and I don't have any equipment to speak of. And this is just another way to make a quick little ingot. Sometimes I call it a loaf because it looks like a loaf of bread. So we'll get our torch going again. And we're on top of our block our uh, ceramic block here and we're just going to melt all of this and this is this takes a little practice because we've got these tension locking tweezers with the heat guard i don't think this is wood i think this is some sort of synthetic fabric and so we're going to add a little propane to the torch and then add oxygen until that yellow tip goes away and you want to heat everything as evenly. Notice I'm rotating my torch. And you don't want it the blue tip to be here. You want it to be here. And the reason for that is that this is a reducing area of the flame and it's not putting too much oxygen in there. So what we want to do is just heat this until it balls up. You might have to push it around a little bit. And then with your off hand, now when it balls up, it always balls up sort of round, right? So with your off hand, we're going to just shape it a little bit. Now that didn't work too good. Let's try it again. There we go. And then we're going to let that cool until the glow goes away. And then we'll quench it. And then again, we're going to hammer it. And then we can rotate the piece. Be aware of how hot it can be. And this is actually a little bit easier to do on a bigger piece like this because the locking tweezers will grab it. The locking tweezers will grab it at the four corners. So that's how you do that. We don't even have any flashing in here, and this is a good start. But really the, the, the use here is, let's go to the rolling mill, and we can see how this would work. So we're just going to start feeding this through here. Open our mill up. You want to open it up until it just starts to grab it and pull it through. And I don't like to let it go all the way through. I like to push it through part of the way. You'll feel the pressure come off the handle and then pull it back. And then we'll turn it 45 degrees, 90 degrees, sorry, and pull it back. And then we're going to turn it down, put my finger here so I can feel that I'm going the right way, and just do it a little bit at a time. And one of the things you learn to feel for is the tension on the handle when you're using the milling grain. Uh, I mean a rolling mill, sorry. The tension on the handle and any large flashing that comes off of the off of the piece. And this is going really, really well. You just want it to turn into like a square ingot.
and it will get longer and shinier and tighter every time. This is starting to get a little more tension on there. So as you can see, we're starting to shape up. Give me just a second, I'll go ahead and roll this down and then I'll show it to you finished. Cruise on over here, I guess. I'm gonna... You're rolling. So we've gone ahead and we've rolled this out to the mill a couple of rounds. I've gone through several of the steps on the mill here. Got exactly what I need to make a, a fitted wedding band. And now all I really need to do is just anneal this to make sure it's soft. If you start running things through the rolling mill or hammering them a lot, you do need to anneal them occasionally because you are work hardening the metal. So we're just going to grab it with my tweezers. And uh, you can't have enough of these locking tweezers. So you see we've got stacks of them here. We're just going to start heating it up. And we just, we don't want to get it too crazy. And uh, while I'm talking about this, I want to talk about doing things in the air. When you're doing all your hot work, either on a charcoal block or on a ceramic um, heat block, the ceramic block pulls a lot of the heat. So I like to do a lot of these things in the air, and which I mean is holding them up in the air because there's nothing here other than the tips of these tweezers to pull heat away from the metal that I'm annealing. So we don't want to get too hot. Sometimes like right now you can actually feel it just sort of moving around and kinking the metal itself. Just get a little bit of a glow. This is sterling silver. Just get a little bit of a glow here. It's kind of hard to see probably in the camera. And then we're going to quench the whole piece in water. So here we are, this is ready to go. At this point, what I would suggest is, believe it or not, run some sandpaper over it and maybe polish it initially because you've got some fire scale on here we wanna get off. And we also get these little, sometimes you get these little rough nubs. They're little flakes, but, so we've gone from a little pile of scrap to some stock that we can make a ring out of. So there you go. I hope you like this tip and Consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.